Hey guys, welcome to the first video of Unit 4 in VCEPE. Today we're going to have a look at um, skill-related and health-related fitness components. So first up are the health-related fitness components. They are aerobic capacity, anaerobic capacity, body composition, muscular strength, muscular endurance and flexibility. And the skill-related fitness components are balance, reaction time, coordination, agility, speed and muscular power. So aerobic capacity is the total amount of energy obtainable from the aerobic energy system. So basically any energy that's made in the presence of oxygen. And there's a few things that will influence it, such as your VO2 max. So your ability to uptake and utilize oxygen will obviously influence your, your aerobic capacity. Um, your muscle fiber type. So if you have a larger percentage of slow twitch muscle fibers, you're more likely to enhance your aerobic capacity because those slow twitch muscle fibers um, use oxygen. Um, also your age, obviously the older you get beyond 30, um, as is the case with um, most of the fitness components, they, it will drop off unless you continue to train. And obviously your training levels, if you engage in um, continuous aerobic sorts of activities, um, working in the aerobic zone, uh, you're more likely to enhance your aerobic capacity. All right, so anaerobic capacity is basically the same thing, but um, you're obtaining energy from the anaerobic energy systems. So the ATP, PC and the anaerobic glycolysis systems. So again, age is um, a factor. It will decrease with um, age beyond about 30. Um, also your muscle fiber type, but in this case, it's whether you have a higher percentage of the fast twitch muscle fibers because um, they will utilize the phosphocreatine and the glycogen without um, using the oxygen. Um, and also your tolerance of waste products, um, how easily your body can withstand the effects of the hydrogen ions and also um, whether it can tolerate lactic acid production. Alright, so body composition is the percentage of fat, bone and muscle in your body. Uh, there's a few different people there in the picture. Um, they've got different body types of what we call somatotypes. So somatotypes are um, a, a name for different types of bodies that we have and they basically fall along a continuum from basically skinny to fat. So the really thin, lean sort of people, um, they are considered ectomorphs. Uh, then you have a muscly sort of person, um, quite stocky, um, and generally they're mesomorphs. And then you've got um, rounded people, people who put on uh, fat quite easily, and they will tend to be endomorphs. And so you can fall along anywhere in that continuum. You don't have to be one particular body type. You can be a mix of two. Things that will influence it are age again. Um, obviously, beyond the age of 30, we find it easier to deposit fat. Um, also gender. Uh, women are more likely to deposit fat, whereas men are more likely to build muscle. Um, and also your diet and exercise, basically, if you have a poor um, diet of, um, say, fast food and high fats, high sugars, uh, that sort of thing, you're more likely to end up putting on weight. And obviously, if you don't exercise a lot um, or you're inactive, then you're more likely to put on weight also, therefore... Um, putting you on the endomorphic end of the um, spectrum. All right, muscular strength is the muscle's ability to generate force against an object. Now, there is a trade-off between force and speed. So basically, the um, faster you try to contract your muscle, the less force you'll be able to generate, and vice versa. The, the more force you try to apply, uh, the slower um, you will contract that muscle. So um, this is also influenced by age and gender. Obviously, the older you are, um, again, your muscular strength will drop off without training. Um, and also gender, if you're male, you're more likely to have muscle mass and therefore um, greater muscular strength. Um, but also your cross-sectional area of the muscle, which is basically how, um, how wide or how big your muscle is. So basically, the bigger the muscle, the more force it can generate. Um, and how the fibers are arranged within that muscle as well. Right, muscular endurance um, is the ability of the muscle or group of muscles to sustain repeated contractions against the resistance for an extended period of time. 
Now, um, there's two types of endurance that we sort of talk about in sport. One is overall endurance, so the body's ability to withstand a lengthy event, such as say a marathon or a triathlon. And then you have local muscular endurance, which is generally what we're referring to in this case. And that is um, where a muscle will engage in repeated actions. So for example, um, when you do fitness testing and you do a sit-ups or a push-ups test, um, you're trying to gauge um, how long your muscles can endure that repeated action for. Uh, there's a few things that will influence it, such as blood flow. So if you have a higher amount of blood flow to the working area, then you have a high delivery of oxygen and a greater capacity to work aerobically for a lot longer. Um, your training, obviously, if you train those muscles and you repeat those actions over and over, over and over again in your training, um, you're more likely to be able to build up a resistance or um, build up endurance within them. Also, um, your training will um, increase the capillarization within the muscle, which means um, it increases the number of capillaries within the muscle belly, and that will also increase blood flow and therefore oxygen. Um, and also just your age again, if um, you know, you're, you're beyond the age of 30, you have to upkeep your training a lot harder than someone that's under 30. All right, flexibility is the ability of specific joints to move through a range of motion. Um, so there's quite a few different factors. Um, one of them is age. In this case, age plays a very big part um, and it's not even beyond 30. It's generally, um, say, beyond our teenage years. So if someone doesn't train in flexibility, then flexibility is lost quite quickly. Um, as is your somatotype. So if you're um, quite muscly, you'll find it harder to be flexible rather than say a thinner, leaner person. Um, and also the, um, the muscle temperature, um, we found that if a muscle is slightly warmer than it would be when it's um, just resting. Um, so say you've done a, a light aerobic workout prior to stretching, um, then you're more likely to find it easier to stretch. And also just generally training, like I said earlier, if you don't train your muscles then um, to, to be stretchy and um, to lengthen, then they're not going to be flexible at all. Um, one of the key areas that we find with poor flexibility is in the hamstrings, which is why uh, the sit and reach test is a very good indicator of flexibility. Um, and the hamstrings being too tight and too short will also um, in, uh, influence a range of back problems too because they pull on the back muscles. So um, flexibility throughout adulthood, adulthood is quite important um, beyond just sport. Right, so balance is the ability to maintain equilibrium whilst moving or stationary. So this means um, basically you need to um, be not falling over. So um, equilibrium is um, being balanced or stable. And a few things it will influence this like uh, your core stability. So how well your muscles interact within your core and your torso. So for example, um, your obliques and your abdominal muscles, how well you've trained them. Um, a lot of people will do Swiss ball training to develop their core. Um, center of gravity, so your low, the lower your center of gravity is, uh, the more stable you're going to be and the more balance that you'll have. And also your base of support. If, um, say for example, your base of support is small, so just standing on one foot, for example, the base of support is the area that your foot covers and it's quite tiny compared to, say, if you're standing on two feet and your feet are quite wide apart, um, that will increase your base of support. All right, so your reaction time is just the time it takes to respond to an external stimulus. It can be anything, it doesn't have to be in sport. Um, a key area of this is when um, people are driving, they have to use reaction time all the time to traffic lights, to other drivers, um, to animals that might run across the road, that sort of thing. Um, but in sport, it's got to do with um, how well you respond within a game or within a match. Um, and a few things will influence this, like optimal arousal and concentration. So um, optimal arousal basically means whether um, you are at the peak of um, whether you're sluggish or too crazy. So there's two ends, you're either really slow and you're not in the mood and um, you're just sort of feeling flat or you can be hyper excited and 
you know, really ready to go, but a bit too ready to go. And there's a balance in between that. And that's called optimal arousal. And also your concentration levels. Um, it will depend on whether you've had a good night's sleep, whether you've been eating properly, um, whether you're stressed. So both of these things will depend or will influence your reaction time. Um, obviously, if you have poor concentration, you'll have a lower reaction time. Also the number of responses. So if you're doing a reaction time test on the computer and um, all you have to do is press a button in response to a stimulus that comes up on the screen, that's one response. Um, but if, say, for example, you're in a game of tennis and you are playing a game of doubles, you have to think about a few different things. So when the when your opponent on the other side of the court will hit the ball, you have to respond in a number of ways. You have to um, find or you have to think about your um, positioning on the court where you have to move to. You have to think about your positioning on the court in regards to your teammate because you're in the doubles. And also then on top of that, you have to think about what move you're going to play in response to the ball coming at you. So there's quite a few different responses that you have to perform and that will um, lower your reaction time because there's a greater chain of thinking involved. And also noise. Noise is everything in the external environment that doesn't really have to do with what you're doing but um, can lower your concentration and your brain sort of has to sift through what's important and what isn't. So for example, you've got a picture of a um, hockey goalie there um, so the noise in his environment when he has to respond to the puck is all the other external players um, the referees um, and also all the cheering from the crowds his brain has to sift through all that and make sure that all he's paying all he's paying attention to is that puck and that he is um, blocking it to the best of his ability is not paying attention to anything else all right, so agility is the ability to change direction quickly without losing balance. And without losing balance is the key thing there. Um, there's a few different things that will influence it, in particular your speed, um, how quickly you can move. And then um, the reaction time. Obviously, if you can react to something a bit quicker, you can uh, be more agile. Uh, your fiber types, again, you want those fast twitch muscle fibers because you want to move quickly. Um, and then also your center of gravity, like I mentioned earlier, the lower your center of gravity, um, the better stability that you have and the more agile you can be. All right, speed is the rate of motion from one point to another. Now there's two types of speed. Speed can be um, basically how fast you get your body from one point to another. So for example, from um, the start line to a finish line in a 100 meter race, or it can be the speed of a body part moving from one place to another. So um, for example, in an AFL goal kick, how quickly can the leg um, move from the ground up to the air to, to deliver that kick and um, kick the ball? There's a whole bunch of things that will influence it. Um, in particular, fiber type, again, you want those fast twitch muscle fibers um, because they provide the explosive movements. Um, your reaction time, again, obviously, say you've got that 100 meter um, race, your reaction time will definitely influence um, how quickly you get off the starting blocks and to the other end. Um, also, your genetics, um, again, genetics will influence um, often how well, what percentage of fiber types that you inherit. So obviously you can inherit a greater percentage of those fast twitch muscle fibers and therefore have greater speed. And just your general um, overall efficiency of movement. If you're not very coordinated, um, it's harder to gain speed. Okay, your muscular power is the ability of a muscle or a muscle group to exert a maximum amount of force in the shortest period of time. Now, earlier I said muscular force um, has or muscular strength has a um, trade-off between um, force and speed so you gain one and lose the other so boxers are a um, fantastic example of um, people who can find the perfect balance between force and speed um, because they need to be quite powerful in their movements um, a few of the factors we've already seen before so for example age um, obviously, as past the age of 30, again, you'll um, reduce muscular power because muscular strength loses out. And also your um, fibre types, again, because there's um, speed involved, 
you definitely want a high percentage of those fast twitch muscle fibers to increase your power. All right, so the coordination is the execution of a skill smoothly and accurately. Um, now, it's um, there's a difference between coordination for everyday life and coordination for sport. Generally in sport, we see movements that we don't perform in everyday life. So you've got um, Rafael Nadal there, obviously in tennis, um, things like a tennis serve, a forehand, a backhand. They're not actions that we do every day in life, particularly a tennis serve. Um, another example would be, say, kicking for goal in AFL or um, hitting a ball in cricket. These sorts of things we don't do every day and they need to be developed. So the sequencing of events in these, so how many different parts the, um, the movement can be broken down into will influence coordination. So the more complex a skill, the more parts, um, the more difficult it is to gain coordination in that skill. Um, also the stage of learning, if a person is a beginner compared to um, an elite player, then obviously um, their coordination will be a lot lesser than the elite. And also just practice, um, obviously a person who practices once a week compared to five times a week will be a lot less coordinated also. All right, so just in summary, there's the two types of fitness components, um, the health related ones, the aerobic and anaerobic capacity, body composition, muscular strength and endurance and flexibility, and then skill related, um, the balance reaction time, coordination, agility, speed and muscular power. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.